Hi guys, I am recording the answers for the practice test as we didn't have enough time to finish and this way you can go back and listen to it if I went too quickly in class. So for the first one, you should have proton and neutron. Electrons do not have mass. The mass they have is so tiny. Which statement is true about the charges assigned to electron and proton? That would be C. 3 is going to be 18 protons. Now it can't be 18 electrons as it specifically says nucleus here. So it has to be B. 4. This is going to be 47. 5 is C as it's just how many protons do you have and each proton is plus 1. The most common isotope of chromium. So what's important to note here is when we write atomic symbols with two numbers, one on top, one on bottom, the top one is going to be mass, the bottom one is going to be atomic number. So if we're dealing with isotopes, your atomic number has to stay the same, but it's the mass that's changing. So what it tells us here is that the most common isotope has a mass number 52, which notation, notation represents a different isotope. So first we check, make sure the atomic number is on the bottom. So that's why these ones aren't correct because the atomic number is not correct for chromium. And then it wants a different one than 52, so it can't be A. So your answer has to be B. Now looking at 7, same idea of mass on top, atomic number on bottom. Well, this one has the wrong atomic number, wrong atomic number, wrong atomic number, wrong atomic number. So it only leaves us with A. And both of the masses are different. So that is why it's A for 8. So this is um, dealing with the weight average mass calculation. So if we have that our average mass of our isotope, oops, that's not right. Mass of our isotopes is equal to the percent abundance, I'm not gonna run out of room here, is equal to percent, that's not a percent sign, percent, ab oh my goodness sakes, you can tell it's after school I'm recording this. Percent abundance times the mass respective to that percent abundance. And then you add this to each respective percent abundance times that mass. So knowing that's the equation, what I would do is plug all the percents given into a calculator with the masses and see which one is closest to 63.6. We already know, um, well I shouldn't say that because, okay. so. Calculations, I'm just gonna pop down here for a second. So how I would do it is I would do percent in abundance. So if we started with option A, that would be 0 0.31 times 63 plus 0 0.69 times 65. And where I got those numbers would be 63 is the mass here 65 is the mass here, and then 31 is the percent here, and 69 is the percent here. So I just plugged all of those in to this equation. I would keep doing that for options A, B, C, and D until I find the one closest to 63.6, which is C. Okay, number nine. Hydrogen has three isotopes with mass numbers of one, two, three average mass of this, what does it indicate? Equal numbers of isotope are present, no. More isotopes have more mass of more than two or three than one, no, because it's so close to one. So more isotopes have mass of one than of two or three. This is the right answer because of how close it is to one, and it can't be D either. 10, so the atomic mass of an element is calculated by C. So this is what eight was doing except numerical values. Ratios, that's the same thing as percent. 11, so I assume most of you picked either C or D. The actual answer is D and the only difference is this E here. And the reason why E 
is not a compound is because these are actually diatomic molecules. In order it, for it to be a compound, it has to have more than one element. So in this case, since it's the same size and the same color, we know that it can't be a compound. It's just two of the same atom bonded together. So your answer is D. We skip number 12. Okay, 13. So for this guy, it asks to reveal, uh, experiments performed reveal the structures of atoms. Let scientists include an atom is positively charged throughout, no. Negatively charged is concentrated in the nucleus, no. Mass is evenly distributed throughout, no. So volume is mainly unoccupied, yes. Experiments uh, with the gold foil indicated that atoms, so in our case, the gold foil, is we had a piece of gold foil, and we shot alpha particles, which are positively charged, at it. Most went through, but there were a few that either bounced back or bounced off in weird directions towards the center, which indicates that we had a positively charged center. So, C. 15. The atoms in a sample element are in excited states. A bright line spectrum is produced when these atoms emit energy. Because remember, you have an electron, you excite it to a higher energy level, and then it comes back down, and this loss of energy is lost in a photon. So you emit energy, and that is what is... Um, creating these colors in the lines in a bright line spectrum. So 16 is just kind of a different way to think about it. And so you have to see, given the bright line spectrums, spectra of these elements, their fake little element A, D, X, and Z, do their spectra pop up in here? And so for example, you would look and say, okay, A, does there a line here between 700 and 650, yep, that's there. What about this line just above 600? Yep, that's there. 500, uh-huh, 450 right before it, yes. So it must contain A. Knowing that, you get rid of options C and D right away. Then, if we do D, does it have two lines that are before 600? It sure does. So, yes, it also contains D. So, it must be A. During a flame test, a lithium salt produces a characteristic red flame. This color is produced when electrons in excited lithium atoms what? Again, you excite your electron. Is the excitation what gives us the ener or the light? No. This is just absorbing energy. It's when the energy is lost in a photon. So it's C, return to lower energy state. 18. So, what can the energy emitted be used to determine? It is a qualitative test, remember? This was part of your lab, qualitative, meaning not quantitative. All of these are quantitative, so that's one way to think about it. But we can really only get at the identity of an element. 19, so if we have a neutral atom of an element that has electron configuration 282, what's the total number of P electrons? So, 2A2, remembering that this 2 is the first energy level, this 8 is the second, this is the third. And so now I'm going to fill as if I knew that I had a total of 12 electrons, and I get that just by adding 2 plus 8 plus 2. So if I were to fill the normal path, I'd go 1S2, 2S2, 2P2. Six here I am at two plus two is four plus six is ten, so I still have two more to fill. So then I go to three S two. So now I have my twelve electrons. So it's asking what is the total number of P electrons? Well the only P orbital or P sublevel we have is this guy. So you should get six as your answer. Twenty. Which represents the electron configuration of an isotope of oxygen in the ground state? 
So ground state is exactly how we would write it if we were filling. So oxygen, its atomic number is 16. That looks like I wrote zero equals 16, but oxygen's atomic number is 16. So in our case, if we were to write it out, filling in our normal pattern, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Here we're at 10, so we need six more. So we go 3s2, and then now we only need four more, and we go to, oops, that's supposed to be a three. I'll erase that here, 3p4. So which one of those match? This guy here. Now, what is the electron dot symbol for an atom with the electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p3? I'm going to erase this for room. Remember, you can wind back and pause it if you need that. So there, we need to know a couple definitions. So an electron dot symbol deals with valence electrons. And you get your valence electrons from the outermost energy level. So valence is outermost energy level. And this is the same thing as the highest principal energy level. So N equals what is the highest? And that determines how many valence electrons. We have to remember though, it can be from multiple sublevels. It's the highest principal energy level. So when looking, the highest in this case is two. But we have two sublevels that give off electrons. So our total really is going to be two plus three, which is equal to five. So which represents five? B. And also, I'm going to pop this up here for a second. If we think about the periodic table of elements, what element is this? If we count up the electrons, you should get seven electrons, which means its atomic number is seven. We are dealing with nitrogen then. And remember the trick I taught you about the groups and how the periodic table is set up for a reason? There's hints at valence electrons. So this whole group has one valence electron. This group has two. That's a weird two. We're going to skip past the weird, goofy transition metals and hop over to boron's group. Three valence electrons. This one is four. So nitrogen's group has five. That is the answer we got. And then six, seven, eight. Then we have 22. Which electron notation represents the valence electrons of a phosphorus atom? So luckily, all of these have five. But if we're thinking about the periodic table, phosphorus is just before nitrogen, so it also has only five. So which one is filled correctly? Well, we know C is not because there are electrons in the p orbitals when C is not even full, so it can't be C. And then if we look at A, we fill one electron at each orbital first, so it can't be A. And D also breaks that rule. There should be one electron in each of the p orbitals first, so it has to be B. 23, which represents the correct electron distribution of a noble gas element in its ground state? Ground state. This means that everything, all the earlier sublevels that we fill have to be full first. So as I'm going through A, 1s2, that's good, 2s2, good, 2p5, this has five, and then it continues on to fill, so that can't be right. Then B, that looks good. All of the things are filled good. C, yep, everything's filled in normal order, there's nothing missing, and then D, 1s1, 2s2, 2p6, 1s1, that's not good, that means likely something's excited, which leaves us with B and C. So now, noble gas element, remember that those are in, I'm going to draw up here, this group here. So what configuration do they need? Well, you have to remember that this whole area here is the P block, right? So if we are thinking about how that means, how many electrons we have, we have to fill the whole entire block here. So I'm going to erase some of this. 
Okay, so going back up here, we're looking to be in this group, remembering that this whole area is the P block. So we need how many electrons in the P block for it to be a noble gas? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we need something that says P6. In our case, that is not C, it has P5. So our answer must be B. All right, 24. A neutral atom in the ground state contains 16 electrons. What's the total number of electrons in the 3P sublevel? So 16 electrons, atomic number of 16, that gives us oxygen. So we actually already wrote the electron configuration above, but as a reminder, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s, oh wait, never mind, sorry, I'm not counting right. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4, right? So, if that's the case, how many electrons do we have in the 3p sublevel? Four. And going over to 25. Now we're doing quantum numbers. So what I want to remind you guys of is thinking of quantum numbers, I want to talk a little bit about the quantum number M. So if we have S, P, D, and F, sublevels. Think of their orbitals and how many they have like a pyramid. So the S only has one orbital and then P you add one on each side. D you add one on each side of the P orbital and then F add one on each side of the D orbital. Sorry this is a horrible drawing but hopefully you get the gist of what I'm doing. So they keep growing. This has to do with their um, M number. Remembering that the orbital, or the M number for orbital S is just zero because there's only one option. And so same idea, every middle orbital is going to be zero, and then you expand out by a negative integer and a positive in integer on each side. So negative one, positive one, so these are all going to be negative one, positive ones. And then we expand and go to negative two for D and positive two and then F adds negative three and positive three. So these are all of our M quantum numbers. And you also have to remember the notation of N, L, M, and S. So N is our principal energy level. What is our principal energy level for this guy, since this is our target electron? Three. So our first number is gonna be three. L is N minus one, so we should get two, which knocks out B and A. And then M, in our case, we are looking at the last orbital here. So if we look over there, that should be a positive two, and it is spin down, so negative one half. So you should get D. All right, now 26. Consider the orbital diagram for the ground state of phosphorus below. How many electrons have the last three quantum numbers? So if it's N, that means this is L, this is M, and this is S. In this case, if we know L is equal to one, which is also equal to n minus 1. If we were to solve for n, we'd add 1 on both sides, and we'd get n is equal to 2. So we know we're in the second energy level, which means not this guy, not this guy, and not this guy. Now, we also know that it is a plus 1m. If we think back, look back up to this guy here, s orbitals only have zero. And so we're looking for m is equal to positive one. Well, the only place that can be is in this p orbital there. 
So we're looking in this orbital box. And then if the spin is positive one half, that means an, it's an up spin. So really, there is only one electron with the last three quantum numbers of one plus one and negative, or sorry, one plus one and plus one half. Okay, so which electron, oh, I should, I'm gonna circle this in. Well, that's fine. Okay, so which electron configuration represents an atom of chlorine? Now we want it in an excited state. So if we think about writing out the shell configuration for chlorine, I always like to start with the sublevel configuration. So we go one, oh, first we have to figure out how many electrons chlorine has. Chlorine has 17. I just realized a mistake here. Sorry, guys. Uh, nope, that's not what I meant to write anyway. I was really stuck on this one. Um, I added extra electrons here. Oxygen is not, or no, I didn't. So, sorry, this isn't oxygen is what I'm trying to say. I, this was bothering me. Um, what it is is sulfur. The answer doesn't change. That's just this wrong element. Sorry. Anyways, okay, so back to 27. If I'm writing this out, we have 17 electrons to deal with. So we go 1s, 2, 2s, 2, 2p, 6. We're at 10. 3s, 2. Now we're at 12. And then we have 3p, 5. So if we were to create our shell configuration, remembering that how it's written is this is the first energy level, this number is the second, third, fourth, and so forth. If we look at energy level one, we only have two electrons, so this is two. Then if we go to energy level two, we have two plus six from the 2s and the 2p, so we get eight. And then the third is going to be 3s plus 3p, so two plus five is seven. So why is A not the right answer? Because it matches. We are looking for excited. This is the ground state, so if it matches, that means it's at ground. Why can it not be B? Because you're adding an electron. Remember, the number of electrons has to stay the same. So if you look at D, that's also the case here. You're adding an electron, so it can't be that. So your answer is C, because you're exciting an electron from the third energy level to the fourth. All right, 28. Which atom in the ground state has a partially filled second electron shell? So, shell. Shell is the same thing as principal energy level. So if we write out each of these states, hydrogen is 1s1, lithium is 1s2, 2s1, potassium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. And sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So looking at all of those, which one of these is not full, but partially filled on the second electron show? Well, it can't be hydrogen because it doesn't even get to the second energy level. And both C and D fill their second, so it has to be B. All right, and then number 29. Which electron configuration represents a neutral atom of nitrogen um, in an excited state? So let's write out nitrogen in its ground state, which would be seven electrons. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. So this is the case, or sorry, not five, three. My bad. I can count. So we, it can't be A, because that's our ground state. It can't be B, because it adds an electron. And um, it can't be C, because it's losing an electron. So, 
or I'm sorry, it can't be D because again, here we are gaining actually two electrons here. So it, no wait, are we gaining two? Yeah. And then it has to be C because we are exciting from the 2s to the 2p. 30. A bromine atom in excited state could have an electron configuration of, so now we're working with bromine. Bromine has 35 electrons, so this will be a longer one to deal with. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3d. Oh, why did I do 3d? I meant 3p. 3 P6, 4S2, let's see, we're at 10, 11, 12, 18, 20 here. So we have 15 more to go. So we can go to 3D10. Now we have five more to go, which gives us 4P5. So if we were to count up for the shell, we start with our one, which gives us two electrons. Oops. Sorry, I have to leave to soccer here soon, so I'm timing myself. We have two electrons here, and then if we go to level two, we have eight. I'll just write this in the highlighter color. And then if we go to level three, we have 18. So that actually, principal energy level would be full. And then if we go to four, we have seven. So your answer, or not seven. Wait, yeah. <gasps> Is my key wrong? No, oh my goodness, I can't see. So that'll be B. Whoo, I need to not record these after school, guys. Okay, hopefully I counted correctly. Now, I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna start another video because I have to go. So I will continue on on part 